The Lord shower grace upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord give you understanding of the message that is coming to you. A great exposition. Let us pray. Divine Father, we thank you for this revelation that you are giving to us in Holiness Revival Movement. That through us the world may hear about the risk of not evangelizing. Father, my brethren who are hearing me now, Lord, grant them grace to escape from the danger that is coming upon believers for not evangelizing. That they may not end up in a bad way in their lives or suffer hardness in your hand upon the earth. Lord, let this book put them into action. Let this book glorify your name in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Consequences of not evangelizing. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 3, Ezekiel chapter 3, I read from verse 17. Son of man, I've met thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. You are the son of man that the Lord is talking about. He got you saved and said, I saved you so that you can be a watchman unto humanity, unto the church. Therefore hear the word at my mouth. Be attentive to my word that I speak to you. Hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Warn the people because human beings forget. Human beings ignore. Human beings despise. Human beings reject. The things of God don't appeal to them. Want them. I created them for me. I didn't create them for themselves. For their personal fleshly enjoyment. I didn't create them to serve Satan. Want them. For me, I didn't create them to pursue their interest. Want them for me. I didn't create them to forget me. Want them for me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. The wicked are in the church. The backsliders in the church are wicked. The ungodly are in the church. The shrewd people are in the church. Thieves are in the church. Unreasonable men and women are in the church. And I have spoken that they shall die. I have given my decree that they shall die. That the soul that sinned it shall die. But you are there. You are there in the church with them. You heard my warning. You heard my word. I expect you to turn to your brother that is sitting and warn him. Don't mind his anger. Don't mind his wicked face. Do what I say. I'm greater than him. I'm more powerful than him. Warn him. 
that he would die. God will kill him. He will go to hell. That's what the Lord is saying. You have seen him in sin. You have seen him in iniquity. And you are the watchman. God saved you for that purpose. Warn him. Warn her. Tell her she would die. That the God of heaven, she would say, she would die because the soul that sinned, it shall die. The soul that plays darkness, plays wickedness, the soul that lies shall die. I've told you, warn him. Warn her. Warn him to save his life. If he does not if save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, he will die. You will come and hear that he has died because the word of God is faithful. You will come and hear that she has died. The word of God is faithful. Why has he died? Because thou givest him not warning. No speakest to his wicked from his wicked way. Which means many people are overtaken by sin, but they forget. If you tell them, they will wake up and repent and not die again. If you are bold, to go out and tell them, be bold about it. Be bold about it. Be courageous about it. If you are bold to tell them, don't mind their faces. Don't mind their name. Don't mind their title. Go, the Lord says, go. Go, the Lord says, go. And tell them, otherwise they will die. You will soon start seeing that they have died. Hearing that they have died. But he said, his blood will I require at thy heart the danger, the consequence of not evangelizing. You will be a sinner. You will be a sinner because you were the one that killed him. Why did you allow God to kill him? Or oh, sometimes it's the devil that killed him. Not God per se. Because where he went into, he went into the hands of the devil. And devil killed him. And God who knew that he would die, told you, go and warn him. Warn him. The Lord gave you a dream. Warn him. The Lord spoke to you audibly. Why are you afraid of man? Is he greater than your God? Warn him. Otherwise, he will die, but his blood will I require at thy hand. His blood. His blood. His blood will be in your mouth, will be in your hand, will be in your body, as though you brutalize him. As though out of wickedness you persist him. You will stand for his blood. You are an enemy to him. You are a wicked man. You kill a person. You murdered a person. Murdered him forever. He shall not be seen anymore. He is going to hell. There in hell, he will remember his greatness is vanity. His prosperity is vanity. Which thing you would have made him to see on earth when he was still on earth? By warning. So that's what the Lord is saying. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. At the time you didn't die, your soul was under captivity of death itself. The only way you come out of the imprisonment of your soul is that you warn him. So warning him is what you must do to be saved yourself. You must open your mouth to warn him so that you too can be saved. So that there can be no transference of sin. So that you will not join rebellion with him. Warn him and be free. If you warn him and he dies because he does not repent, your hands are free from his blood. 
the danger of not evangelizing. The consequence of not evangelizing. The risk of not evangelizing. That's what the Lord wants you to know. Yet, he said in verse 20, Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Righteous man. Who told you that righteousness is forever? At a particular time. When he does not continue with righteousness. All his deeds shall be forgotten. All his righteousnesses shall be forgotten. All his suffering. His sacrifices shall be forgotten. For the sin he has committed. He shall die. The angels were righteous. The angels were holy. They were met so. But when they followed Satan, all their righteousness were forgotten. They were cast out of heaven to die in hell forever. So that's the nature of the God we serve. Brother, fear him. You have not yet escaped until you really been to escape. We never knew this. We thought we are at ease. We are more concerned for our salvation, not knowing that a sin was lying close. We are carrying sin in our lives without knowing, just because we refuse to love others. We refuse to, to help others. We refuse to deliver others. We refuse to evangelize others. We refuse to warn others. We fear them. Who are you fearing? Why are you fearing man? What will he do to you? What power does he have? He will be angry, that's the end. What will he do beyond anger? He will hate you, that's the end. What will he do beyond hatred? He will not be speaking to you again. What is that's the, the end? What is he speaking for? Is it your life? He will not visit you again, that's the end. What do you need his visitation for? Will he save you? Do what God says. The danger of not evangelizing. The consequence of not evangelizing. Nevertheless, if thou want the wicked, the righteous, the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is one. Also thou hast delivered thyself. It's as if the sin of your neighbor is endangering your life. The sin of your neighbor, the sin of that person that is close to you, the sin of that man that is your friend, the sin of your wife, the sin of your husband, the sin of your child is a danger to you. Very dangerous. It's contagious. Because if you don't carry out your own, your own portion over his sin, you will die. Not only himself. You will die. If the person pollutes the air, are you not going to smell rotten air? You will sit near him. Will he not smell rotten air? Now he has sinned. He is sin is spreading his own tentacles around you. You must do something to escape. If you see rotten smell, suddenly rise up. Don't you turn your nose away. Don't you even stand up and move to avoid it. Now the only way you can avoid it is to rebuke him for his sin. Rebuke him for that sin. Otherwise, that sin is prayed. That sin that is only on that person is prayed. And you allowed it to spread. God will hold you responsible. Why did you allow the sin to spread? Why? If any man sees his brother commit sin, he shall warn him for the sin and restore him. He that restores his brother shall know that he has saved a soul and has covered a multitude of sins because the sin will be spreading others will come in others will come in others will come in you are responsible because you didn't do what god said you should do brother sin is contagious we seem not to know this we seem not to bother 
We don't know that we're smelling rotten things into our stomach. We're smelling rotten things that were fake us. Except you take action. Except you move away. So, the action you will take when sin happens among your neighbor, your brother, your sister, is say it unto him. That is what the word says. Rebuke him. Rebuke him. The thief on the cross, on the right hand side of Jesus, rebuked his fellow. Otherwise, the spirit of mockery would have also covered him. Where did you see somebody rebuking Jesus? Mocking Jesus. Damaging Jesus. Damaging the children of Jesus. And you said nothing about it. You went to hide yourself. You hide yourself for death. It's not that only person that will die. As for him, he will die. As for him, he will be judged. But you too, because you saw it and hit yourself. You too, brother. We didn't know it as strong as this. We didn't know it as strong. We were playing with it. Don't think you have escaped. Said Mordecai to Esther in the king's palace. Don't think you have escaped. Because you are not the one doing it. Don't think you have escaped. No, because the matter is not touching you. By the way, am I the one? The one that is doing it requires rebuke from you. It requires warning from you. That is the way you will escape. If he saved, you have hidden a multitude of sin. If he refuses, your hands are clean. A danger. Brother, many things are already going wrong with your life. My sister, many things, including sicknesses and diseases, are already going wrong in your body. If you are to be diagnosed by a spiritual man, a spiritual physician, Jesus himself, he would say, this thing is because you are not preaching. You are not evangelizing. You are not opening your mouth to one people. This sickness came to you. This problem of encycled to you because you refuse to open your mouth. Yes. You may say, what connects my situation, preaching or not preaching? The gospel. Yes, it connects. Because some mischief will happen to you if you do not preach this gospel. Again, the resurrected Christ continues his life and work of soul winning through the believer. He cannot come physically and do it. He dwells in you. And is interested in bringing people to himself. Not to go out for soul winning is to deprive Jesus of the opportunity to win souls through you. Preaching the gospel is his heartbeat. But why are you not giving him chance in your life? Are you not offending? Is he happy with you in that condition? Will his blessings continue to flow in your life without obedience? Does not God punish his children for their disobedience against him? Consider their ways and see whether the diagnosis is true in your life or not. See whether the situation of your law, restlessness, peacelessness in workplace, joblessness, and all, is not because you don't preach. Jesus is in you in vain. The one that was walking up and down, moving from village to village, wanting to move to your neighbor, wanting to touch the man on the street, is kept silence under you. How will he not be agitating? How will he not be angry? Are you not a valueless man, a soul that has lost his own saltness? What is Jesus doing in your life? Maybe he's not even there again. Because... His purpose of saving you is that you will save others. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You're not doing anything. Weeks are passing. Months are passing. You don't preach. Are you going to heaven? Is heaven for such a person like you? Why will you go and tell Jesus? He saved you for yourself. Love is not selfish.
In Haggai chapter 1, I read verse 5. That's what God wants you to know. Yes. Now therefore, thus yet the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have so much, and it bring in little. Verse 6. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there's none help warm. And he that ended wages, ended wages to put it into a bar with holes. Thus hear the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. It is because you're not preaching. Yes. It is because you're not evangelizing. It is because you're not opening your mouth to preach. That is where life is like that. Draw, draw. Dry bone. But you must rise. Go and preach. Go and preach. That's the condition for you to come out from the hand of the devil. Go and preach. I am with you always. That's the condition for you to feel the presence of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 16 to 18. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Internet is there for you to preach message. You are not doing it. Telephone is there for you to preach the gospel across the world. You are not doing it. Books are there for you to spread. Buy and spread. You are not doing it. Tracks are there for you to distribute. You are not doing it. The tapes are there for you to send across. Just send the website. Describe how they can get it in the YouTube. Spread it about abroad. You are not doing it. Woe is unto you. Paul said, woe is unto me. If I preach not the gospel. Come, what makes you think you are a Christian? We who are doing this thing. You are seeing us. We are doing it to you. Why are you not doing it to others? How, how are you a footballer? When you are not playing. How are you in the game? When your leg does not touch the football. When you don't run up and down. How are you are, are you playing? Whom are you playing for? Your leg has never touched the football. One minute now. Five minutes now. Ten minutes. Fifteen minutes. Thirteen minutes. Your leg has not touched the football. What are you doing there? How do we rate you? How can others learn from you? Brother, what makes you a footballer? Ball has not touched your foot. Ball has not touched your leg. You have not used your head to, to kick the ball, knock it to another person. Hey, you will not continue. They will not pick you. They will drop you out. You are wasting chance. Somebody else must take your place. You think God will allow you idle in his house. Chapter leader. Remain. Nobody is joining you. Unit leader. Nobody is joining you. No active work. Even the God of heaven knows you are not serious. You are not even coming for meeting. You are a chapter leader. You are a zonal leader. You don't even come for meeting. For God wastes. You are not supposed to be there. You are not. You have never won a soul. Five years now. It's like somebody who, who is in the match and his leg has never touched a football. Can they keep you? Can God keep you? Are you a Christian? Are you a serious Christian? 
Was Jesus behaving like that? Are we, your leaders, behaving like that? Answer. Ye that are at ease in Zion, fearfulness will seize you. Fearfulness will take over your life. Yes. Because you're playing hypocrisy. You're not serious. You have taken a position somebody else will take over. You are taking a position that is not your own. You are blocking growth in the kingdom. You are. You are. You are. You are blocking others. You are blocking others. God is not happy with you. Why are you there? Why? Paul said, war is unto me. That's why he was busy walking. Rise up and walk to show you have life. To show you have life. That Jesus is in you. Walk. 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 Let us hear your voice on the street. Let your telephone ring. In response to your evangelizing. That is the world. Told you many things are already going on wrong. In your life. Apostle Paul sums up the things that will happen to him. If he did not preach the gospel as whoa. Hmm. This is on earth. What about after death? Don't die without preaching the gospel and think you're going to heaven. Don't die without preaching this Jesus and think you're going to heaven. What will be unto your life? I'm telling you, Paul on earth said, woe be unto me if I preach not this gospel. And you are not preaching this gospel. Is there no woe on you? Is there not woe on you? Sitting down, praying, God give me. Hey. In his mercy, he can give you. But in other times, he will say no. Are you taking me for granted? Do you know how I feel? Did I not tell you other sheep have I also, which are not of this fault? Them also I must bring. What are you doing to help me bring them? What are you doing to help me bring them? Only God give me, God give me. No wonder he doesn't answer the prayer of many people. Yeah. It means you will come and re you will come and sympathize with him because of the mishaps, the judgments of God, and the, the evil things that will come upon him if he did not preach the gospel. Paul is saying, you will come to him and say, Oh, brother, huh, alas, this is what happened to you if Paul stopped preaching the gospel. If Paul stopped preaching the gospel, you will come and see wounds all over his body and sympathize with him. You will come and see the man sitting crippled and sympathize with him. You will come and see dryness over the man and sympathize with him. Yes. You are not preaching the gospel. If he did not open his mouth to tell people about Jesus. Yes. The main thing that brought the Lord to the earth. Some evils will happen to him. Do you know that the four lepers said the same thing? When they discovered the treasure. That the Syrians had left, they came to the Syrian camp and discovered that there were abundant food, money, and properties to the point that they had enough. See what they said to one another. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 9. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is 
a day of good tidings and we hold our peace if we tarry till the morning light some mischief will come upon us now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household so they came and called unto the porter of the city and they told them saying we came to the camp of the Syrians and behold there was no man there neither voice of man but horses tied, and asses tied, and the tent as they were. And he called the potters, and they told it to the king's house within. See, discover treasure, and you will be saying you discover holiness movement. You say it's a treasure. Hey, thank God I came to holiness movement. Nobody is benefiting from you. Nobody is benefiting from you. Nobody is benefiting from you. You say you're in holiness movement. That you discover treasure. Hey, my eyes open. These people, when they discover this treasure, they say some mischief will come upon us if we don't tell it out. Some mischief. Backsliding will come upon you if you don't tell it. If you cease telling the gospel. Devil will take over your life if you don't tell it. If you see, see talking to people about the treasure of God, about how God opened your eyes, how God brought you to Holy more, how you learned the truth, how you believe God, He sanctified you, and you're not telling anybody. People perishing over there. These lepers must have heard that some women were eating their children. They must have heard because there's no food. Now, God has done abundance and brought them to abundance. Should they keep quiet? That they should start eating human beings in the kingdom of God? They should start eating human beings in the house of God, among the people of God? Because there's no food. Is that to the glory of God? The life these people are living, does it give glory to God? The life these people are living in their churches, does it give glory to God? And you know holy more. You know holiness revival movement. You know the books. You have the tapes. You have the you have the Zoom. You have everything. You have the internet. You have the YouTube. You have the Facebook. You have the whatever. You have you, you have all the website. And you keep quiet. Mischief will overtake you. Mischief. Mischief. Mischief will overtake you. That's what this leper said. Don't think it that it shall be well with you because you're eating rice and stew very plenty in the king's palace. Esther, if you call your peace, the Lord shall raise enlargement from somewhere to reach out to your husband, to reach out to your wife, to reach out to your children, to reach out to your relatives, to reach out to your neighbors, to reach out to your friends. But you, mischief, will happen to you. Open your eye. This is in the Bible. It takes you to go up to a higher level to understand this. You have come to the point of understanding this. Why are you sitting still? Satan is deceiving you. He knows that he has still gotten you for hell. Because you are not preaching. He knows he has still gotten you for hell. He knows the nature of our God. He knows what is written in his word. He knows. The four lepers knew that some mischief would happen in their lives if they sat and enjoyed their lives without going to share the good news with the people in the city. You do not know that some mischief can happen to you as you go to your office, marketplace, and everywhere without speaking to people about Jesus. You do not bother that some mischief will happen to you in this life and your family because you are not preaching. Paul knew of the great havoc he might be causing to himself if he stopped preaching the gospel. He said, woe is unto me if I preach not this gospel. Hence, I am preaching this gospel to win souls to Christ because God has commanded me to do it. But more than that, 
to save my life from the mischief that can happen to my life. I do not want mischief. I do not want any problem. Therefore, I must preach this gospel. For this reason, the preaching of the gospel has become a necessity for me. Not even the matter of interest and zeal, but it's necessary because I need to avoid mischief in my life. Learn from Paul. You need pleasure? Let them give you pulpit to preach. That's what you want? Is that the, the, the lepers have, pre, have pulpit to preach? It's, my, it's only during conference, special program. Overseer. Organized program for me. The organized program for the lepers? Well, was it all organized time that Paul was going about preaching? Was Jesus preaching in organized time? When he preached to the woman of Samaria, was it an organized time? You are not aware. You have not yet come. You have not come to perfection. Add this to your knowledge of Jesus and come to perfection. Be it perfect. Be it perfect. Paul said, I do all this that I might present everyone perfect in Christ Jesus. Brother, my sister, it's for your perfection I'm laboring. Because your eyes are dull. You are lazy. Your mouths are closed. I'm opening them so that you don't go to hell. I'm opening your mouth. You will not sit still. You will jump up. I set fire under your buttocks. Jump up. Carry your telephone today and preach to somebody. Go into the Zoom, internet, and preach to somebody. Do it continually. You want to go to heaven, and heaven is so close. You don't know when you will die. When you die, evangelism. When you die, evangelism. The Lord shall raise up evangelism. The Lord shall tell you how many people you murdered. Do you murder them and come to heaven? You shot your mother and come to heaven? That's the question. You must do something about your life. In Mark chapter 16, verse 19 and 20. So then, after they had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the world with signs following. Let everybody say, Amen. 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 There are Christians that do not pay tithes. Do they not suffer the judgment of God for not paying tithes? You know this. You pay tithes of mint and honey. You pay tithes of everything. Because you know the implication that the Lord says, Ye are thieves. Ye are cursed with a curse. Because you are not paying your tithe. And you never to pay tithe. You think that tithe payment is more than evangelism? If they read tithe payment, is it not the same thing? You are paying tithe so that there should be money for evangelism. Money for soul winning. Do the two things. Two great commandments. Pay tithes, preach the gospel. Love God, love your neighbor also. Pay tithes, preach the gospel. Love God, love your neighbor also. This is the great commandment. God has great assignment. God has for you. Do the other one. Don't leave the other one done. Yes. The Lord gave us revelations. Concerning one of our overseers many years ago. The revelation pictured an old white haired man sitting by the market side, and people were passing very close to him. And rain was coming heavily with wind. He was asked, Father, why are you sitting this way? Do you not have any place to go? He said, It is my son, this is my son, that has put me here and has not come to take me. I'm waiting for him. It happened at the time one of our brothers was overseer of Ghana. You put Jesus there and you are not carrying him around from place to place to serve people. You keep Jesus idle in your life, in your family, in your church, in your society, and even in your nation. He expects you to organize various programs 
so that he can be touching various lives. He expects you to be moving around from place to place so that he can be serving people through you. But you are not doing it. How will he be happy with you? When Jesus was alive in a physical body on earth, he said, I must walk the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man shall walk. Is this the Jesus that is in you, child of God, who is always ready to walk and not to sit idle, but you are not doing it. You are not going out. So he is standing still in your life. Some mischief will come upon you because of how you are treating Jesus in your life. He will go away from you and you will not see his face. You will not see his presence any longer. The only way for God to be with you is that you go and preach the gospel. Doing something for the Lord according to the grace he has given you. But if you are not doing this, remember the spirit of the Lord will not strive with men forever. God will not strive in your life forever. He shall not remain in that marketplace. He will leave that place and your life will turn dry. No connection with God anymore. No connection. Go out and win souls for the Lord. Go out and tell the dejected ones the message of hope. Go and give the sinners hope that their sins can still be forgiven them. Tell the wizards and the witches that Jesus has the ultimate power to deliver them from the power of Satan. This is the message of hope and this is your duty. Take it from today. Don't sit down anymore. No growth in your unit. No growth in your fellowship. No growth in your nation. Who told you that the devil has taken over everybody? That Jesus has no power to break the oaks? You don't go out. You don't make effort. Why are we making effort and you're not making it? Why? Are you a child of God as we are? Are you a child of God? Are you a minister of the gospel as we are? What have you exalted above God? Money? Prestige? Honor of men? Praise of men? Material resources? What have you exalted? You answer for it. God didn't leave you here for riches. He didn't leave you for wealth. We, the, the maniac of gathering, deliver, renewed, got born again, told Jesus, I will go with you. What did he say? No, remain here. Be going about to the ten cities, the capitals, and be telling people what I did for you. Many people will want to come to me too. Prepare them. Get them to me. He left that man there. Where did he leave you alive that you didn't die? Is it not for himself? What have you done now? What have you done now? What have you done now? Whom have you changed? Whom do you talk to? What have you done? Whom have you sent past books to? Whom have you spoken to? Whom have you sent text message to for Jesus? You are among the white men. What do you do to them? What do you say? How do you demonstrate it that the creator is angry with them? What have you done to serve them? Brother, my sister, this is your day. This is warning to you. I don't want you to die. And the Lord began to require your blood from me because I didn't want you for lack of evangelism. I've warned you today. I've warned you today. Don't sit idle. Your sins are remaining with you. Because you can't open your mouth to appreciate God for removing sin from your life. The power of the blood is no more working in your life. Faith is dying in your heart because you're not opening your mouth to refresh yourself in Christ. The Lord is not renewing your strength. The Lord is not renewing your grace because you don't value it. You don't value it. You don't tell other people about it, about Jesus. Go. And tell people. Go and tell people. Gather your family and start with them. Call them wherever they are. Tell your brother. Tell your sister. Tell your mother. Tell your father. Tell your neighbor. Tell your friend. Tell your colleagues. Tell them. Tell them. Go and do it. Yes. In Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1 and 2. 
Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, they were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Hmm. How will your life not be dry? How will it not be dry? Dry bones in the valley. The Lord is not with you. He said, go and I am with you all the way. But you are not going. So he's not with you. And you are not encouraging him to be with you. You are not working to make him fresh in your life. It's very dangerous to live your life without the preaching of this gospel. Again, not to be engaged in evangelism is to expose yourself to the camp of the devil without defense. No defense. It is the presence of the Lord with you that is a defense. And since you are not preaching and he's not with you, you are exposed. No defense. No defense. No defense. No defense. Because you are not preaching. 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 Yes. You are not preaching. You are not preaching. In Jonah chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Can you see? Refusing assignment is carrying yourself from the presence of the Lord. Refusing assignment is carrying yourself. Refusing to go and preach is removing yourself from the presence of the Lord. And Jonah rose up and flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and, the, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fear thereof and went down into it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. See him in trouble. See him in trouble with the wind. He shall soon be in trouble with the fish. The creatures of God. Why? Not preaching. Not preaching. The message of evangelism given to Jonah was, Go to the people of Nineveh. Cry aloud against them. And tell them God is angry with the sinners because of their wickedness. God is angry with the sinner because of stubbornness and rebellion. But Jonah, our own brother Jonah, rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish because you refused to evangelize. See what is happening around you. The unfortunate thing is that you do not even know that your unfortunate situation is as a result of lack of evangelism. You are blaming witches and wizards. You are taking more time to fast. More time to stay at home in fasting. Worsening your situation. Blaming Satan. Saying that he is responsible for the evil things happening to you. Little do you know that you are the cause of your, of your predicament. Jesus is saying to you, I ask you to preach my word. You are in the position to win souls for me. In fact, I even clearly reveal my, someone to you for you to go and preach to him. But you refused. This is why sickness, problems, and poverty have come upon you. The healing in Jonah's life came through repentance and going back to Nineveh. The solution to your problem is evangelism and soul willing. If you are spiritually diagnosed, the cause of your problem might be because you have refused or forgotten to evangelize. You are not preaching. You are not opening your mouth to tell sinners about Jesus. You wonder why your ways are blocked. You accuse your neighbors and colleagues. But little do you know that you are the cause of your poverty. Lack of evangelism.
This book will reach you. There's much to say. It is meant, as Job said, in the book of Job. Job, chapter 34. Job, chapter 34, verse 31 and 32. Job, chapter 34, verse 31 and 32. Yea, surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement. I will not offend any more. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Surely, it is meet to be said unto God by you. I have borne chastisement. I didn't know all this while. That this thing I have been suffering is because of lack of evangelism. I didn't know. That my prayers have not been answered all this while because I don't preach to people. I didn't know. That God opened doors to bad dreams in my life because I was not preaching. I didn't know. I have borne chastisement. I will not offend anymore. God, I won't offend anymore. I won't offend anymore. I won't offend anymore. I won't keep my mouth shut anymore. I will start now. I will start now. God, I won't keep quiet again. Jesus, I won't keep quiet again. Lord, help me. That which I see now, the Lord has taught me today. I have done iniquity. I will do it no more. The Lord has taught me today. My eyes have opened that I've been doing iniquity. Now I won't do it again. Jesus, 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 break that Satan. Break the yoke that keeps me from non-evangelism. Bind the spirit that keeps me from not evangelizing. Whatever is that blocking me, doing two jobs, doing three jobs, even in those jobs, am I not to preach? Even in those, don't I meet with human beings there? Where am I fearing? Hey, they will retrench me if I preach the gospel. Bind the spirit. Bind it. Bind it. Bind it in your life. Bind it in your life. Cast it out. Break it. Yes. Rise up as the prodigal son. I will arise. And go and do my father's will. Do my father's will. Do my father's will. Do my father's will. Father's will. Then your father will open his law. He will open his, wide, his hands wide to embrace you again. Your father will put shoes to protect your feet. Your father will give you acceptance. The ring of acceptance. He will put it in your hand to show, I have accepted you. Your father will jubilate. He will call others. Angels will join your heavenly father to jubilate. He will defend you before your brother. Jesus. Jesus. Go to Europe. God, touch them. Touch them everywhere. Jesus, let them preach. Let them preach. Let fire burn in them. Fire in your body. Fire in your bones. Fire in your eyes. Fire in your heart. Fire everywhere. Oh, if you keep quiet this day, fire in your heart. Let fire. God, move them. Jesus, let your true children manifest themselves that they might not go into the hand of the devil. Bind the spirit in their life. Bind the spirit in their house. Break it. Let them arise. Break it. Let them arise. Bind the spirit. Let them go for you. Jesus. Let them be fruitful. Let them be fruitful. Brother, receive the power. Receive the power. Receive the spirit, my sister. In Jesus' name. Fire upon your life. Fire upon your life for evangelism. Soul winning. Evangelism. Fire upon your life. Thank you, Lord. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Cry to God. Plead with him. Plead with him. Ask him to help you. Worship.
Open your mouth. Cry repentance. Cry out in repentance. When must you go to hell? After coming out from, from darkness. After coming to holiness movement. Let the power of God descend on you. Let the power of God descend on you. Jesus. Show them the way. Oh Lord, help them. Show them your mercy. Show them your mercy. Christian that does not speak. Christian that does not speak. Dumb, dumb, that do not bark. Jesus Go on tell them Go on tell them that Jesus died for sinful war Go on tell them Go and tell them he's coming back again. Go and tell them. Go and tell them Jesus died for sinful world. Go and tell them. Go and tell them he's coming back again. Who will tell them? Who will tell them? Jesus died for sinful war. Who will tell them? Who will tell them that he's coming back again? I will tell them. I will tell them that Jesus died for sinful war. I will tell them, I will tell them that he is coming back again. Jesus, oh Lord, power upon them. Pour your power upon their life. Let them go forth with boldness. Let them go forth with boldness. Let them create time with boldness. Let them make sacrifices. Jesus. 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 Wow. 
I will tell them, I will tell them that Jesus died for sin for all. I will tell them, I will tell them that he is coming back again. I will tell them, I will tell them Jesus died for sin for all. I will tell them, I will tell them he is coming back again. Thank <laughs> you. 
Jesus name we pray. Amen. Present, present yourself to God. I'm going to pray for grace. I'm going to pray for your forgiveness. I'm praying that God will give you another chance. You will arise like the prodigal son. Raise up your hands before the Lord. I'm going to pray for mercy. Ah, my father. God, I want you to show mercy to your children. They were playing with your world. Ah, father, blot out their sins from their life. And give them another chance. That's Peter, after denial of Jesus, had another chance to serve the Lord. God, give them another chance in Jesus' name. Forgive their sins. Take away this ignorance from them. Not knowing that not preaching the gospel means they are wicked. They are not thankful to you. And that you are angry with them. And so, Father, I am praying, let the power to preach the gospel take over them. The power to preach the gospel enter them. The power to evangelize. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. The power of evangelism. The power of soul winning. Receive it. Receive in Jesus' name. The Lord shall show the sign. You shall show for the sign. You shall show for the evidence that you have had this word. You will show it. The devil shall know that you are going to arise. The prodigal son shall no more be in far country. The prodigal son shall return to whom? The prodigal son shall come to please the father. Please Jesus. Please Jesus. Please your father. Please Jesus. In Jesus name. Amen. All Lord, all the obstacles, all the discipline, all the all the judgments that have come upon them for not preaching your word, remove them so that they can go and preach your word now. Father, forgive them. Remove those judgments. Let them go and preach your word now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Make them useful children. The people you want to serve in the environment, serve them now. The people you want to serve in their family, serve them now. The people you want to serve in their workplace, serve them now. The people you want to serve in their units, serve in their chapters, serve in their zones, serve in their nation. Serve them now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Now you devil weakening the people of God. You devil telling them various lies to weaken them in God. I rebuke you over their lives. Amen. Get out from their lives. Amen. I break your power over their lives. Amen. The Lord reward you for your lying. The Lord judge you for your lying tongue. Amen. In Jesus name we pray Amen. be delivered completely from the trap of the devil from the lies of Satan in Jesus name we pray I am ready to hear your testimonies